Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 just came out. James Gunn has been revealing all kinds of deleted scenes and Easter eggs. One of the biggest is Annihilus, who's a huge Fantastic Four villain and part of the Annihilation story that inspired part of the plot of the movie. So we'll break it all down and some of the other cool Easter eggs and deleted scenes he just revealed. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're still doing that special giveaway for the Guardians of the Galaxy video game, so I'll name another winner later in the video. And careful for spoilers for the movie if you haven't seen it yet. But James Gunn just revealed that originally Annihilus was going to be the main villain of the movie and he would have been the person who created Rocket. It would have required a huge plot change and set Annihilus up as a much bigger overarching Thanos level threat, kind of like Kang the Conqueror. Annihilus was originally a Fantastic Four villain from the Negative Zone. They explored the Negative Zone during the 2015 Fantastic Four movie. It's meant to be kind of like an alternate dimension of pure antimatter energy. Annihilus is a bug-like creature who evolved accidentally from an insect and a mutation gave him high intelligence. He gained the knowledge of the race that created him accidentally and then acquires the cosmic control rod in the negative zone, which allows him to manipulate cosmic energy at a super high level and he uses that to conquer that dimension. Reed Richards discovers the negative zone. The Fantastic Four start exploring it, running into him. Over the years, they defeat him multiple times. They even stole the cosmic control rod from him to heal Sue Richards one time. So the Fantastic Four are really the only threat that Annihilus fears, but he tries to invade Earth multiple times, crossing dimensions different ways with his army. Each time, he is defeated by the Fantastic Four, sometimes with the help of other Marvel crossover characters like the Avengers, the Thor characters, the original Captain Marvel, even Agatha Harkness. That's right, Agatha Harkness is a huge Fantastic Four character. Originally, the connection there is that she was Franklin Richards' nanny for a while. You try telling a 10-year-old that his mother is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I promise I won't bite. Mm. I actually did bite a kid once. I'm guessing Franklin Richards was probably not the kid that she wound up biting because you don't want to bite Franklin Richards. He's like one of the most powerful characters that Marvel has ever created. For example, Galactus becomes the herald of Franklin Richards. We know Marvel is going to do the MCU version of Fantastic Four. They're about ready to officially announce the cast. They're probably going to wait till Comic-Con to do that, even though it sounds like Adam Driver has been confirmed as the new Reed Richards. The rest of the Fantastic Four will be announced by later this year. The connection between Annihilus and the Guardians of the Galaxy is the Annihilation storyline and the sequel to that event, Annihilation Conquest. So during Annihilation, Annihilus invades the regular universe with his army, the Annihilation Wave, after he discovers the Negative Zone version of the Power Cosmic, the force that Galactus wields, giving him a huge power upgrade. He tries to take out Galactus and capture all of his heralds like Terax, the Silver Surfer, to take the Power Cosmic as his own. They wind up helping defeat Annihilus with the other crossover characters, like the other big characters, including Nova, Philavel, Quasar, who does appear in this movie and joins the team for a while. Then by the events of the sequel, Annihilation Conquest, that Guardians of the Galaxy roster has come together as the version of the MCU team that we've seen in all the Guardians movies. By the end of all this, Adam Warlock, Philavel are both on the team as they are in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. But the main villain of the sequel event winds up being Ultron, who takes control of the Phalanx army, a race of technological beings. The universe had been weakened by its fight against Annihilus during the Annihilation event, and he uses that to his advantage to try and take over himself. That was meant to explain what happened to Ultron after the Avengers fire his body into deep space. It would have been like what happened to Ultron after the events of Avengers Age of Ultron, but in the MCU they've changed that storyline, and they're bringing Ultron back during the Iron Man Armor Wars movie. But even though they had planned to use Annihilus in the Guardians of the Galaxy 3 movie and they're changing a lot of the Ultron plot from Annihilation Conquest, even had they included all that stuff in Guardians 3, there still would have had to have been a lot of changes because Annihilus doesn't have any real connection with Rocket in the comics. So making him Rocket's creator, as James Gunn said he would have done, would have been another big change. The entire point of the movie, like the main plot, was meant to be Rocket's origin story. He'd always planned on telling that story. And in the comics, High Evolutionary also did not create him, so that would have been another big change. Originally, the group that created him were called the Game Masters of Half-World. There is an Easter egg for that in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie during their prison lineup. Based on the way Rocket's origin goes down in the MCU now, I think this means that he fled to Half-World after he escaped the High Evolutionary and then just grew to adulthood there before he met Groot. 
but you can see how they were planning on turning Annihilus into a much bigger character early on, which a lot of you have been theorizing heading into Marvel Phase 6 and beyond. Post Thanos, Avengers Endgame, there's just a short list of villains that everyone's been theorizing are big enough or could become big enough to be Thanos level threats, and Annihilus is one of them. And even though they went with Kang in Avengers 5 will be Kang Dynasty and then we're doing Secret Wars, a funny, not so secret you probably heard about is that Marvel didn't always plan for Kang to be the main overarching villain of Marvel Phase 6 in Avengers 5. In fact, if you go back a couple years to around Avengers Endgame and you look at what they were saying, there was all this talk and hype about the Eternals and the Celestials and it was revealed at least originally before the Fox Disney buyout deal went through. Marvel had planned for all this multiverse saga, Marvel Phase 4, Phase 5, Phase 6, Avengers 5, Avengers 6 to revolve around the Eternals characters. They were meant to sort of be the replacement for Marvel not being able to use the X-Men characters or the Fantastic Four core characters. And if you remember, James Gunn had finished writing the script for Guardians of the Galaxy 3 during 2018 before Avengers Endgame came out when Marvel was still planning a completely different plotline through Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. But then James Gunn was fired, the movie sat around for years, they finally released it in 2023 during Marvel Phase 5 with some changes. So it sounds like early on, when the movie was still going to be released early in Marvel Phase 4, they had planned to set up Annihilus as a possible new main overarching villain that they could use in Avengers 5. Now we all saw what wound up happening. The Loki series happened. Initially, Marvel didn't plan on saying Jonathan Majors was also really a Kang variant, just calling himself He Who Remains. They actually cast him for Loki only as He Who Remains. That was the original intention. It wasn't until they started writing Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, deciding that they wanted Kang the Conqueror to be the main villain of that movie. Then they saw Jonathan Major's auditions for the Loki series and said, oh, what if we made these two characters the same person or similar people and came up with the whole concept of the Kang variants in the Dynasty of Kangs? So all the Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty plot, all the Kang variants, was added on the fly late in the process after Marvel decided that they wanted to use Kang as the next overarching Thanos-level villain. So the whole idea is that early on, Marvel was just trying out a couple of different ideas, a couple of different villains, and seeing which ones stuck with audiences the most. So there is an alternate timeline where we would have seen Avengers 5, Annihilation, and then Secret Wars. For a lot of people that thought that Annihilation would have been Avengers 5, there were a lot of early theories about that a couple years ago. Turns out you were more correct than you might have known. I think they'd always planned on using Secret Wars for Avengers 6 though. It was just a question of who the villain of Avengers 5 would be. Let me know in the comments though if you would have rather seen a Nihilus become the villain of Avengers 5. James Gunn also revealed a bunch of other cool easter eggs and details. He did confirm that there were no plans for a Guardians of the Galaxy 4 movie, but he did say that Marvel let him pick Rocket's new Guardians team with Adam Warlock, Philavel, Quasar, and Cosmo, and that he's spoken to them about the way they'd use the Guardians team in future Marvel movies. He revealed another Pete Davison cameo. He was one of the High Evolutionary's servants. He was wearing a helmet the whole time, so you wouldn't have been able to recognize him or known it was him unless they told you. He was in James Gunn's Suicide Squad movie. That's the connection. He's one of the characters that they kill off hilariously at the beginning of the movie. There was also a funny Peacemaker cameo too in the background, like Blink and You'll Miss It. It's a spinoff from the DC movie too, like it's connected to that Suicide Squad movie. When Rocket saves all the animals at the end of the movie from the cages, like the baby raccoons, all the other animals, he said that the eagle in the cage there is the actual eagle from the Peacemaker series, like the pet that Peacemaker keeps with him all the time. Make all the jokes about a Marvel DC crossover that you want to, like High Evolutionary crossing between cinematic universes to steal animals from the DC universe. The funny thing about that too is that now that James Gunn is the Kevin Foggy of DC and he can actually make that deal, make the deal to do a Marvel DC crossover, he said that there's actually been some discussion about that, but not to expect them to do a Marvel DC crossover movie for like 10 more years, but that it could actually happen now. Usually it involves a lot, a lot of lawyers agreeing to things in a room. Back to the MCU, the Marvel Universe, James Gunn also talked about the Thor character. He said that he never had any intention of addressing Thor anywhere in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Originally, you remember, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 would have been released before Thor Love and Thunder had he not been fired by Marvel. So originally, that would have been the next place where Thor had to show up with the Guardians of the Galaxy, the As Guardians of the Galaxy. They would have just had to address what happens to him before the events of Thor Love and Thunder. James Gunn said that when he wrote the script for Guardians 3, he never addressed Thor during it at all, and he didn't change the script after he'd been fired. Like, he finished the script, the final version of the script, in 2018. So they would have just picked up in Guardians 3, you would have never seen Thor, and you would have gotten to Thor Love and Thunder not knowing what happened to the character. 
In reality, he did get fired by Marvel. Thor Love and Thunder came out first, and Taika Waititi did that as Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor Guardians of the Galaxy crossover at the beginning of the movie, just to explain what happened to the character Nyx. James Gunn was telling jokes about that too, like, thank God Taika Waititi bit that bullet because I never had any intention of addressing Thor during my movie. He also revealed that Rocket has not been in contact with Thor since the events of Avengers Endgame. We can blame that on the incident with the goats. Connecting back to his future DC movies, James Gunn also said that some of his actors from Guardians of the Galaxy 3 would be in Superman Legacy, which he's in the middle of writing right now, even though it's a writer's strike, and the other upcoming DC movies that he works on. But he didn't say which actors and he didn't say which characters in the DC movies they'd be playing. Michael Rooker would be a really interesting Perry White if he winds up using him because Michael Rooker is in pretty much all of James Gunn's movies. And if he does wind up using Chris Pratt as a DC character, I feel like Booster Gold would be the best fit for him. Let me know in the comments which Guardians actors do you want to see in upcoming DC movies and who do you think they should play? Congratulations, Brandon Martinez, 2564. You're the giveaway winner for my last big Guardians of the Galaxy video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Everyone click here for my full Guardians of the Galaxy 3 breakdown and Easter eggs for the entire movie. And click here for my Guardians of the Galaxy 3 post-credit scene video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.